entrepreneurs, inventors, programmers, graphic designers, engineers, innovators, students, leaders. We are the Carpet Initiative. We are a team, family. And we think like there is no box. We are technology's true north. We are true north advanced technologies. So at True North Advanced Technologies, students from many different backgrounds, from engineering to business, graphic design, programming, some with no engineering experience at all, have really come together to get a hands-on experience building a highly advanced robot that they really can't get anywhere else. My name is Alec Lane. I'm the program manager at True North Advanced Technologies. Hi, my name is Joanna, and I'm the deputy project manager of True North Advanced Technologies. Hi, my name is Alicia Tran and I'm the Chief Financial Officer of EDD Boot Team, True North Advanced Technologies. I am Kathleen Godson and I am the Chief Scientist. Hi, I'm Pooja Chibalu and I'm in charge of Risk and Opportunity Management. Hello, I'm Mitchell Baker, I'm the Chief Test Engineer for True North Advanced Technologies. My name is Chris Chan and I am the Chief Strategist. Hello, my name is Hoken and I'm the Chief Programmer of True North Advanced Technology. My name is Ryan Siamo and I am the Lead Electrical Engineer for True North Advanced Technology. Alright, so the CARPA Authority has tasked True North Advanced Technologies with Project Viper, a project involving the creation of a, an Ophidian robot that has snake char characteristics, capabilities, uh, that will be used to explore an archaeological site. Uh, we have a time frame from August to June in which we have to design the robot, uh, prove that we have the capabilities to create the robot, and then actually program, test, and utilize this robot. So for EDD, each team has a specific budget for the year on how much to spend on uh, parts and banners and promotional materials. And so uh, at the beginning of this year, each team started off with about $1,500 in each account. and. It's my job as the CFO to continually raise more money throughout the year so we can cover our costs. When I first heard of Project Viper, I thought to myself, how do you build a snake? So Project Viper caught me a little off guard. Uh, never before have I had to analyze the biomechanics of snake movement to try and model it after our robot. Snakes are complex animals that are difficult to model with such uniform parts uh, that robotics typically, typically consist of. So at True North we really had to stress our engineering design prowess to really analyze the biomechanics of snakes, their movement, their characteristics, to really create a highly advanced robot capable of completing this mission. I was very pleasantly surprised by the and how other, how other engineers have made an attempt to capture this complex yet simple form of movement. So EDD is really interesting. I mean, coming into EDD from CAMS, we have a ton of experience working with teams, but I think EDD really pushes that far and beyond. You come in and you have 21 people, and they're not just people, they're really more your corporate they're your corporate employees, they're your co-workers, and working with them is definitely a challenge, but it's a great bonding experience that I think will really mitigate over and transfer over to our work experience. The most, the thing that made us stop a lot was not making deadlines. Uh, deadlines kept getting pushed back and pushed back because uh, members of the team couldn't uh, come into consensus with other members of the team and I think that as a whole hindered us from uh, getting done what needed to be done and that it pushed everything back to where we had to do it within a really really tight time constraint. 
Being a 21 person group, we had a lot of ideas. And so to narrow this down, we broke up into groups. And then once we listed down what, we, what each group had in common, we then put it all into a design matrix and narrowed them down. The first design was more of a car light and uh, one singular base, like robot. It was special because it had very complex uh, mechanisms in there that had uh, some very ingenuous designs. The reason we didn't go with that was because it was simply too big and it didn't have enough space in the inside to fit things. Um, when we realized we had to make the robot more snake-like to complete the task, I was inspired by mainly trains. I thought they, they kind of provided a snake-like form to them. Because of some special designs in a robot, there were things that we couldn't do ourselves, so we sent them out to get laser cut in and made some really special designs in a robot that really enhance the looks. So I work with the movement aspect of the robot and we are moving using suspension wheels which we tested over several different terrains on our, in our prototype in order to show that it could provide stability and flexibility as we course through rough terrain. So um, through this prototype test uh, we finalized our design for the wheels So we ran it through three different terrains, grass, gravel, and dirt. And throughout all terrains, when the robot encountered rough patches of um, terrain, it would flex its wheels to give the robot stability so the robot wouldn't turn over or um, corkscrew out of control. I think the weakest part of our robot was during the proof of concept phase, the uh, intake system. The fangs on it were made significantly too short and were different lengths, which made it pretty much useless in picking up a lot of the balls. And plus, our motorized ramp didn't seem like it was going to work. We changed that by three printing fangs rather than milling them, making them significantly larger and interlocking so they could scoop a much larger area but still be able to fit into the mouth of the robot. For maximum mobility and efficiency, Hydra offers three different types of vision and four different cameras. Two live video feeds on the front and back of the robot, one for room mapping that allows us to create a 3D image of the room we're in, and one for thermal vision so we can see different heat signatures throughout the room. and I think I'm one of the few people um, on the teams that uh, don't do anything technical related and I think it's actually really enriching to be in this environment because even though I don't plan on being an engineer I'm still learning about the entire engineering process and the different types of techniques and uh, the different kinds of tools and materials that we're using in order to uh, finish this project. So before coming to EDD I had little to no experience in the engineering field but I chose this class because I wanted to challenge myself. I wanted to do something great 
And through this class, I learned that I want to become an engineer. So, the project, uh, as it's gone along, has really uh, become more than just an engineering project. The people that you work with on the weekends, every day in class, you know, you really bond with them. You get to know them, you get to know what they like to do, you hang out with them a lot, you're with them a lot. So, you really build friendships. You know, I'm friends with every single person on the team, and I think we have a really strong bond that has really only been forged through this strenuous project and a lot of the time we spend together. Uh, I know these friendships will last and I'm really glad I had the chance to meet everyone here. So I joined EDD because it's really a phenomenal innovative class. It's something that merges both engineering and entrepreneurship and those are fields that I'm really interested in majoring in in college, so interesting class. EDD is more than a class to me. I will be able to take these experiences into my college life and into my career. One of the things that I thought about many times this year is, do I really want to be an engineer? EDD has helped me answer that question with a great yes, because I learned that there are many different aspects to being an engineer. You have to be confident in your abilities. You have to be loyal to other people. You have to be able to communicate. It's an entire being and a character that you have to become to be an engineer. And uh, this year has really helped me gain my characteristics to move forward to. I joined uh, the CARPA initiative, this EDD class, because I knew if there was a class in high school that would push me past my comfort zone, it would be this class. And throughout the course of this class, I did come out of my comfort zone. I was pushed into situations where I didn't feel that I could finish it, but that didn't stop me from trying. And when I did try, I was rewarded with even if it wasn't completed or there were some mistakes on it, it still helped me grow as a person. And I feel that this class has helped me improve many of the skills that I want to be refined, like communication skills, get to talk with many members, and I know that in the future, communicating will be a huge part of what I do in my job. And this class is in your ordinary note lecture, filled with exams and quizzes. This is a real-world experience that you won't forget.